Let me pause for a second just to ask you a question. One of the things that we're stressing here today are the new venture projects you've worked on and just new ventures. How do you know what you're proposing is a pipe dream or something that God has really placed in your heart to do? I know today it's just a project you've done, but how about in real life? How do you know if it's a pipe dream or it's really something you should do? One of the things in our corporation that I try to do each and every year is to have a theme based for all my communications during the year to try to help us keep focused. Over the past few years, I've chosen some of the themes of accountability, being prepared, keeping sharp, looking at our business as half full or half empty. But for 2010, I've chosen the theme of courage. One challenge when you're deciding whether a leader is courageous is that courageous and foolishness look almost alike. They are just the opposite. For instance, if you were driving down the highway today and you saw a building on fire, and you don't know if anybody's in that building, you're the first one going, going past the scene and you stop. If you jump out, go in that building to check to see if anybody's in there, and you rescue somebody and come out, you're seen as a hero. However, if you go in that building and no one's in there, and you actually die going into the fire, you're seen as a fool. How can the same circumstances bring opposite results? See, courage and foolishness are exact opposites. You know, you look in the mirror and you see yourself being courageous. Is that courage that's reflecting back to you or is it foolishness? They're exact opposites. So how in the 21st century do you view things clearly, not knowing if the leadership, your leadership or the leadership you're working for is either foolish or courageous? Or the new venture you're proposing, is it foolish or is it courageous? To me, courage is one of the greatest attributes any leader could possess. If we look at scripture, oftentimes new leaders were told to be courageous. At times of real difficulty, God told them to be strong and courageous. For example, if you know the story of Moses when he died and Joshua took over his leadership, God told Joshua to be strong and very courageous. Now let me look back at Moses for just a moment. He's one of my favorite leaders of all times, and I love to st study great leaders from the past. If you remember the story of Moses, when he was 40 years old, he was living in Pharaoh's household and he was being trained to be the next Pharaoh. And he observed an Egyptian going out and beating a Hebrew slave. And Moses went out to the aid of that slave and he killed the Egyptian. So the question is, was Moses, Moses courageous or was he foolish? You know, in Moses' mind, I'm sure he saw the act that he was doing was very courageous. And he thought the Hebrew people would observe what he did and they would think he was very courageous. But that didn't happen. His native people saw what he did as very foolish. And they knew what he did would cost them a lot of hard work. And they'd have to make up for his foolish act, an act of someone who should have known better. See, I believe Moses truly thought he was being courageous by taking care of that Egyptian, but he wasn't. But if we look at Moses' life 40 years later, we find Moses out in, the, in a desert wilderness, tending sheep, and God calls him to go lead his people, the Hebrew people, out of Egypt. I'm sure Moses, in his heart and in his mind, immediately went back to 40 years before that, and he said, I'm not going to be a fool again. However, God had other plans for Moses. God knew that Moses was really a man of courage. And he was the guy who was going to lead the people out of the land. So how did Moses know if he accepted this leadership proposal that God was giving him? Was he being courageous and not just making a foolish decision? Moses really didn't know how it was going to turn out. But I think one thing Moses did know as a result of being in the desert for 40 years. 
He knew he was no longer being driven by being comfortable and making the Hebrew people comfortable. He learned that contentment was much more critical. See, contentment comes from the inside, not from the outside forces that you have no control over. Contentment comes by learning to trust God, who knew what was best, not what he thought was best. Contentment is not based on feelings, but based on knowing someone had not given him a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-discipline, who knew what was best, even if he didn't know the outcome. God would give him the courage to do the right thing for the right reason. 